Hey guys, half click up here, coming at you again with yet another Yamaha FZ6R maintenance tutorial. Today we are going to be swapping both the chain and sprockets. So new chain, new rear sprocket, new front sprocket. We're going to do it all at once and do it right. Uh, take a look at our very worn chain here. This chain has probably, I don't know, 15 to 20,000 miles on it. You can see we have O-ring separation, or not O-ring, they're, they're actually called X-rings. Uh, there's a certain science behind that. Look it up if you're interested. But uh, you see we have actually lost several X-rings. They are coming apart in different areas, just kind of poking out. You can see the just in general the chain does appear to be very worn. It's actually fairly clean and lubed right now, believe it or not. It's just that old and used that uh, it just it looks terrible. And you see here we also have some kinking action going on. Uh, once you get kinks in your chain, uh, it's another sign that it's absolutely done. And overall, it's absolutely stretched out. So we have a super tight spot and a super loose spot. And uh, the chain is not even adjustable anymore. Now we have all our tools laid out here, all our different things. Uh, let me show you guys what we're working with here. Oh, so this is the DID X ring chain and sprocket kit. Um, this was 120 bucks on Bike Bandit. Bike Bandit is the only company I was able to find that uh, that sells this kit. Uh, for 120 bucks, you get both a new chain and a rear, a uh, front and rear sprocket. Um, you see here, uh, let's see, it says this chain and sprocket kit may contain either a gold or unplated ZVMX or VX chain. See attached sticker. And so the attached sticker, oh, there it specs what you're actually getting. Um, according to the Q&A, the, the FAQ at the... Uh, in the like comment section for this product on Bike Bandit's website, uh, someone asked, you know, how can I make sure I get a gold chain or, or whatever? And they said you can't really choose; it's luck of the draw. They just send you what they got, and uh, they sent us our little kit here. Just so happens to contain the V20 VX3 DID Pro Street chain. Um, looks like it's going to be standard natural color. Um, I'm not actually familiar with the V20 VX3. Um, that on the bike is a, uh, a VX2 X-Ring chain. So, I don't know. VX3 X-Ring should be good to go. Looks like they, uh, send you some complimentary DID stickers. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And in case you were wondering, apparently, uh, you get JT Sprocket. Yep. The brand JT Sprockets. I think JT Sprockets has been around for quite a long time. Um, so, you know, it's it's not exactly vortex or driven, but we're just going to go the way they gave us. Because here's the deal, guys. DID is elite. Okay, so if DID chains trust JT Sprockets, then uh, I'm going to trust them too. Now, of course, there is a certain order of operations here. Uh, first thing that has to happen is this cover needs to come off. That will expose the front sprocket. Um, then we will loosen that front sprocket. Now, once we have that front sprocket loose, we are going to go ahead and cut um, this chain off. Then we are going to remove the axle and wheel. Uh, we're going to pop the new rear sprocket on and uh, put our new chain on. New front sprocket goes on as well, and uh, we'll wrap it up. So here we go. So it's just three hex head bolts here, and it's a uh, it is a five millimeter hex head. That is a 30 millimeter nut. So there you go. Um, 
Got this at Home Depot. It's a deep well, I know, but it's all they had. And yes, I also know it's not impact rated, but I figure we're just going to be blipping it. Yes, we are going to use an electric impact to, uh, to get this puppy off of here because uh, it is on there with what should be 61 pound-feet of torque. So uh, 61 foot-pounds. Uh, we are not going to use it. Uh, wife's home. We are not going to use the um, the impact to put it back on. We are going to use the uh, torque wrench and do it right. Okay. So I have this uh, scrap piece of PVC pipe that I keep in the toolbox in my truck just for you know whatever situation may arise. And today's situation is we're going to use this. We're going to put it above the swing arm. And we're going to run it across both swing arms. And you see the wheel. Whoop. There we go. You see now the, the wheel can't move. And the point is that when we hit this with the impact, it'll prevent the entire assembly from spinning. We don't want it to spin, we want it to be stationary. So uh, this should, theoretically, hold everything in place so we can make this happen. Here we go. And just like that, there you go. Perfect, man. <laughs> And uh, when we go to reverse this procedure and um, tighten this, the new nut down to that 61 foot pounds with our uh, trusty torque wrench, uh, we are going to do the reverse situation where we put it uh, above the wheel spoke. Like so. Which will prevent the wheel from going that way. So there you go. Neato burrito. And the next step here is to select a set of rivets to grind down. And the reason we want to grind these rivet heads off, uh, or at least a little flush, is so that it takes it easy on our Motion Pro PBR tool. Um, it'll put less stress on the components and just give us better longevity. Um, and it's an expensive tool and we don't want to break it. So we'll rivet off a couple of heads, utilize the, uh, the brake feature of this tool. By the way, that's what that means. Uh, press, brake, rivet. And now uh, you know. And so, one thing this tutorial certainly is not is um, instructions on how to use this tool. Uh, if you need a very good tutorial on how to use this tool, uh, go up here and check that out. That will teach you everything you need to know about how to use this tool. There's one. And there you have it, guys. Chain is broke. There you go. Yeah, you know, we're really going to get to see the true condition. I mean, I'm... Wow. I'm seeing chipped teeth and everything already. So this this is going to be uh, quite the revelation kind of a situation if you catch my drift, guys. Let's go ahead and uh, let's let's pull this thing out of here. Uh, 
Look at that. That is one high mileage chain, folks. Hey, let's set this thing down and take a look at it. Look at how it's just a kinked up. And, uh, golly. Look at that. I mean, you know? I mean, you guys know my uh, love affair with frickin' Motul, so <laughs> you guys know that I religiously um, lubed, cleaned and lubed this chain. I, I was cleaning and lubing this chain like once every two weeks at, at, at the longest interval, right? So look at that. There you go. But DID, baby. Good 15 to 20,000 miles on that chain. Not too shabby but huh, for the bushes and of course uh rear wheels got to come out now so we can put the new uh rear sprocket on there All right, guys, so here's our rear wheel set up on a uh, nice soft surface so we don't scar up our brake rotor on the other side there. See, it's actually chipped. Some of them have little chips on the, on the edges that are missing. Not very many of them, but you know, that's, that's pretty good quality, though, man. That's a, that's a Driven. The brand name is Driven uh, rear sprocket. I'm pretty happy with that performance. That's a lot of miles on this sprocket, guys. Well, anyways, uh, let's get the old one off, get the new one on. really come out in the light here and uh, that's one thing guys we're losing daylight quickly but Dude, this thing is shiny, huh? Oh, look at that. It's like freaking chrome. Interesting. Hmm. Well, I didn't realize it was going to be that dang. <laughs> well, I, then again, I had no idea what uh, brand sprocket it was going to be in the first place, but see here. Yep. Oh. Just looking at uh, the side by side, I can see a few teeth on the old one that are the phenomenon called shark teething, right? Got some shark teeth going on compared to this new one. Substantial difference, guys. Well, anyways, let's get the new one on. Well, so as I was saying, you know, uh, 57 foot-pounds of torque on each of these little nuts is a lot, but better safe than sorry 
we're gonna go ahead and use some uh, blue Loctite on there. And this is the gel type, so it's not messy, which is uh, a good thing. Just a dab. Just a dab will do. And another thing, always, always, always tighten in a star pattern, just like you do with lug nuts on a wheel. Anytime you have a, a circular pattern that you have to work with, always go in a star pattern. So there's one, go all the way across to the other, and then alternate like that. There, and now we need to apply the uh, 57 foot-pounds to each one. Voila. All right, guys, and so we actually did run out of daylight. Today is the next day. Uh, kids are out here doing their th weekend thing, so uh, we'll just have to have them in the background. There's some background noise, but here we go. Front sprocket coming off. <laughs> so you got your nut, you got a washer as well. Want to preserve that. And front sprocket coming off. Front sprocket doesn't look uh, nearly as bad as the rear did. In fact, it looks, uh, it still looks good. There's no sharp teething. Uh, maybe a wear here and there, but uh, overall good condition. But hey, we got a new one. We're going to replace it anyways. Here we go. Why ain't that shiny? New nut. Okay, so we got the nut snugged up by hand, just you know, just as tight as we can get it by hand. Um, and of course, we cannot apply the 61 foot pounds until we put a chain on there. And then remember, utilize this uh, PVC pipe to block the rear wheel from spinning backwards. So the next step is to go ahead and uh, put our new chain on, and that way we can snug this nut up, then hit it with a punch, and uh, then make sure our uh, Rear axle nut is at 65 foot pound, and uh, we'll go on from there. Should be good to go. So let's check out what we're working with here. Remember, 
no, we talked about the uh, VX3 chain. No, oh, here it is. What are you doing, Rue? It's like a little Christmas gift, isn't it? Or you know what it's like? It's like a uh, fish from a fish market. <laughs> of course, I've only seen that in the movies, but isn't that how they, they unwrap the fish, right? All right, here's our master link. All right. And our VX3 chain. It is very oily. We're gonna have to clean that up and uh, put some mold tool on there before we take our test ride, so. Wow, nasty. <laughs> All right, let's get it on there. Okay, and I don't actually know the easiest way to do this, so we're just gonna have to figure it out as we go. Just kind of thread it on there, right? How much I got? How much stuff in here? Okay, and so what we've encountered, as you can see here, um, it looks like we're a link short, but in fact, all we have to do is loosen our nut back up and actually tighten the uh, chain adjustment assembly, and that'll bring us close enough, uh, it'll bring the rear close enough to the front to close that gap. And uh, that's another thing, guys. Um, there is an advantage to actually ordering um, a motorcycle chain based on your year and model bike. And the reason is, is um, this is specifically a 118 link motorcycle, all right? Um, the 46 and 16 tooth combination sets it up for 118 links. So if you already know what your factory link count is, you can thereby order your next chain at, at, with that factory link count and it'll be exactly what you need. A lot of tutorials you'll see on YouTube, guys just buy random length um, you know, random lengths of chain, and they end up having to press out a whole bunch of links to uh, close up that gap. But again, if you know how many links your bike is supposed to have, um, it'll simplify the process. So there we go, 118 links. We got to bring it in just a smidge more, and uh, we'll be able to link up our master link right there. Here we go. All right, and there you go. Oh. Oh, there we go. So again, all we have to do is ch uh, tighten the chain assembly to suck the rear sprocket towards the front, thereby giving us the additional slack to uh, set it up to where our master rivet link will be able to connect our uh, our two ends here. And that's the next step now. We got to get our, uh, our Motion Pro PBR tool back out and set it up for press and then rivet after that. Now, of course, uh, in your little master link kit here, you are going to have the link, the plate, and most importantly, the X-rings and grease to grease up those X-rings, so, um, isn't that cute? Chain grease and a bunch of Japanese writing. Sweet! Do not eat. <laughs> right? <laughs> and they give you plenty of it, too, so I'm, I'm pretty liberal with this stuff, man. I want to go ahead and get it coated real well on there.
Now, when it comes to pressing this uh, this plate on here, you want to have a good uh, digital caliper um, because you want to get a thickness measurement of an existing factory uh, link here. And when you press this plate on there, you want to mimic that as closely as possible. Uh, otherwise, you risk ruining your master link and, um, and, and setting it up for where it'll be too tight, right? If you overpress this, um, it'll kink and it's ruined. You'll have to cut it out and get a new master link and start over. So just real quick, let's uh, zero this out. All right, and let's see what a factory link has what the thickness is all right so you're looking at uh, about 16.78 is what it says I mean you can probably be 16.75 to 16.8 I'm guessing All right, guys, and guess what? We're running out of daylight yet again, but uh, here is our final measurement on our press, 16.77 millimeters, and uh, that's within half a millimeter thickness, so I'm happy with that. I'm certainly going to roll with that, so there we go. Now we just have to uh, turn the tool to the rivet setting and go ahead and uh, set our rivet. Okay, so now here's the other measurement you want to get. So first we went with the press and we wanted to duplicate as closely as possible the thickness of the factory links um, now we want to mimic as closely as possible the width of the uh, the factory rivets right because when you start mashing on this thing and you uh, you flatten it out if you go too far you'll crack it and the little edges will crack and it'll it'll uh, leave it useless. You'll have to start over just like if you screw up the other one. So let's begin with taking a factory rivet head measurement. Looks like that is like 5.38 so we can say roughly 5.4 All right, guys, so at the end of the day, with barely any daylight left, we are done. 5.12 and 5. Uh, 5.11, 5.16, eh, close enough. So there you go. Chain installation is complete. All right, so what now? What comes next? Well, we are going to go ahead and put our 61 foot-pounds on the front sprocket nut and then we're going to use our punch and go ahead and deform on the chamfered edge and that'll be it guys. Alright guys, so you can see um, in the shot that gap there and there's a gap up top here. Um, I'm going to spin around to where we can tap the bigger gap and uh, you only have to do one, and we'll do this one, and then um, this nut will be good for another chain swap, in which case we will hit the bottom one there. But for now, brand new nut, we'll go with the, uh, the top gap here. There, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I wanna make sure that sucker is pinched, you know? And oh yeah, it's definitely pinched. So there you go. Yeah, so anyways, uh, as I was saying, 61 foot-pounds, um, she is, scarred like we want it and uh, that's it guys I've got my oldest son here Hi. TJ um, providing light because guys we we are out I know it looks bright but that's the camera um, adjusting so it's it's getting dark um, but uh, man I, I'm rushed now now that we're done um, all we got to do to button it up is uh, put the cover back on there 
and um, we are going to want to tighten our rear nut. Don't forget about the rear axle nut. We're going to tighten it to 65 foot-pounds and uh, we're going to make some minor chain adjustments. Make sure it's where we want it. Uh, it's a little loose right now, so yeah. I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, tighten it up a bit and then that's it guys. That's uh, Yamaha FZ6R chain and sprocket swap. Uh, look guys, if you have any questions about uh, the work that was performed here today, um, leave a comment down below. Furthermore, I'm open to critiques. Um, if you see something that I could have done better, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Anyways, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the content. Subscribe if you haven't already, um, especially if you ride a Yamaha FZ6R. I've got plenty of other uh, of maintenance videos and tutorials in my uh, playlist called FZ6R Mods and Maintenance, I think is what it's called. Um, but anyways, like, subscribe. It's been Half Click Up, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'm out here. Peace and a good bye.